Is the internet the new China for the luxury goods industry? That's one of the big questions being debated at this year's Financial Times Business of Luxury Summit in Monte Carlo. China accounts for over 30% of personal luxury goods consumption, up from only 3% 10 years ago. But according to research from Bain, China's luxury market shrank for the first time in 2014, down 1% from a year earlier. And as luxury sales in China slow, the internet is emerging as a new driver of growth for the industry. Hard luxury, the sort of the, jewel, the fine jewellery, the watches, I think they had an understanding of luxury that didn't translate to them in a very obviously internet way. So I think they were quite reluctant to harness the power of digital because they certainly didn't see it as an opportunity to, to for e-commerce. And because they were very obsessed with it being a service industry in which the client and they had a very ex sort of specific relationship, very much kind of going in store, having a special client, having people that, you know, having, having an environment of luxury in which to buy the luxury as well. And I think they were a little bit, they just didn't think it would need apply to them. Online shopping can be a pretty unglamorous experience. There's no shop assistant on hand, and online customers can't get up close and personal with that high-end designer item to examine its look and feel. The luxury industry has been accused of being slow to embrace technology, but is that about to change? Farfetch, the luxury online fashion site based in London, recently raised $86 million, valuing the company at $1 billion. Its chief executive, Jose Neves, says the smart luxury brands will strike the right balance between physical and digital. The, the physical experience is absolutely fundamental, um, but it will be augmented by uh, the digital uh, world. And the real uh, challenge for the industry is to be online in the legitimate channels uh, with where the experience is controlled, where photography is professional, where customer service is fantastic, where uh, pricing is um, obviously um, according to the etiquette of the industry, um, because the alternative is the consumer-to-consumer -consumer gigantic marketplaces out there where you can find any brand. Online fashion marketplace List tries to create a bespoke shopping experience by letting users customise the way they shop. Founder and chief executive Chris Morton says big luxury companies could learn something from tech startups when it comes to data. Everyone has now realized the power of this data. The customer who buys uh, Gucci in uh, New York will, might buy a completely different brand as the LA customer who buys Gucci. And it's very difficult for, for these brands to learn about these adjacencies. Um, and so one of the, one of the things that, that we're excited to bring to them, which, which we're seeing a lot of appetite for, is the amount of data that we can share with, with how these consumers are behaving and how interacting with those brands. Questions remain, though, about how luxury brands will compete and defend their brand identity in the social media age. Can the luxury industry, with its focus on exclusivity and high-end design, coexist with the speed and accessibility of the internet? Why not try it? I just think, you know, why, why close an avenue when, you know, we're not in an environment economically where we can sort of risk to just not do things. I think it's important that we kind of look forward and, and like, there's no, there's no kind of huge risk. Obviously, you've got to have your infrastructure in place. You've got to have your delivery systems. You've got to be able to, like, deliver the level of service that people are expecting from buying a very expensive jewel or watch or whatever it is online. China's been this kind of unbelievable sort of Shangri-La for so many companies. They've been over there, they've, they've not had to do almost anything. Open a shop, it's just sold. I don't know if you're going to be able to replicate that with the internet in quite the same way, but certainly it's a huge area of development that I think got overlooked whilst everyone was like pushing into Asia. Luxury might have been slow to embrace the internet, but there does remain a bit of a conflict between traditional luxury values and the speed and accessibility of a click-to-buy culture. In a changing economic landscape, technology provides challenges and opportunities for the luxury industry. Daniel Garahan, Financial Times, Monte Carlo.